morning, y'all. Good morning. I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see. There's something <laughs> counterintuitive about that, isn't there? Um, there's not a whole lot uh, happening right now. I've, you know, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on the on the uh, interview that I did with uh, Alvin Blunt, and I'm hoping that that's going to open some hopefully open some doors in this community. Actually, John and I were just talking before that. Right up here just a little bit ago about an organization that many folks are aware of. But I think as, as long as we are really open to working with other organizations out there in the community, it will happen. Now, the form that it takes, I don't know. You know, I mean, I think we just keep trying to connect with organizations and find out who they are and what they are. And the vestry can uh, make sound decisions about whether or not we want to work with them. We may not want to work with everybody in the world, but that doesn't mean we don't want to work with folks whose aims are similar to ours. And I think that I'm talking about, you know, principles of wanting to help folks outside of the church whether they walk through our doors and attend the service or not. To me, that's not the issue. The issue is whether or not we are connect, connected to the community so that they are comfortable that they know us well enough that they can come in here and go to church with us. Because we're a little bit different than the Baptist churches. Um, we're not a little bit different. We're a lot different. I know, I haven't been a Baptist for, for quite a while. Um, I realized that the church, that church, didn't think about minorities, Indian people in particular, the same way that I did, that I do. And, um, and they're not used to the kind of ceremony that we have around the Eucharist. Um, you know, they have typically one Eucharist a month in uh, the uh, more fundamental churches. And God bless them for that. So the idea of having one every Sunday is something they got to come to an understanding about, <clears throat> generally speaking, if they want to, if they want to be comfortable. Just handing them a book of common prayer is probably not good enough. Because getting through the Book of Common Prayer, even when you need and know and been doing it for your whole life, sometimes it's difficult to get where you want to go. Um, but what I'm saying with, with all that, as long as we uh, continue some form of outreach, I think we'll be provided with opportunities to work with folks in the community. We just got to keep our antennae up and, and pay attention. And uh, when I hear about things, I'll bring them to the vestry, as I have in the past. And we'll talk about them and determine what we're going to do. And then we'll move forward in one accord. I believe in consensus. I would rather work for consensus at every vestry meeting for six months than go with majority rule. Majority rule is not good enough for us, I fear. You know, we have to, if we can agree via consensus, then we, we have a path we can walk down the road. So I'm, I'm telling you that in terms of letting you know that I'll be starting a Wednesday evening service and I'll be changing that from Wednesday to Thursday every week. You know, until we see a kind of gathering of folks and see if we want to just do it one night in one particular way. Um, so we'll start at 6.30 on Wednesday. We'll be going with the Brenda's format uh, that she suggested to us. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, we'll be... Uh, having a short evening prayer 
along with the service, and we'll get to more organized praying at, at, at the end of what we're doing with the, with the readings. And uh, we'll see how much time it takes to do that. What I'm seeing right now is to try to get everything that we want to do into an hour. That's a challenge, you know, if we're going to be doing an evening prayer, doing the readings, and doing some more organized prayer. Um, but we're going to keep doing it and see how it works and see how it fits people's needs. Any, any questions or ideas about that? Okay, good. Um, anything else going on that we need to know about, that you folks know about, that I might not know about? Well, I guess we'll get on with our service then. We'll be doing a, a healing service. So if you want to receive a, uh, in Indian country, we call it doctrine. If you want to receive a doctrine, let me know. And, or just stay here and I'll, I'll say a prayer over you. I'll be glad when we get to the point where I feel like it's safe for me to make physical contact with somebody when I pray. Um, but that's a difficult thing to do right now, so I try to get as close as I can to you physically when I pray. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna do that, and uh, that means line up along the rail for the uh, Eucharist and for the healing blessing, and that's really about all I got. Any Anything else? Okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Holy Eucharist, right two, continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the, the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. 
This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say Psalm 23 responsibly at the Ashes. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. And he guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the, the valley of the shadows of death, I shall feel no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Revelation. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the living water, of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. It was the festival of the dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. 
I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray and praise you, Lord Christ. Bless the wisdom of the Holy One above us. Bless the truth of the Holy One beneath us. Bless the love of the Holy One within us. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Still waiting for my gifts. They haven't arrived yet. For several years now, I have received a short daily quote and a beautiful photograph from St. Mary's Retreat Center in Suwannee. Some stay with me longer than others. One quote this week I really liked. It read, Worry and faith try to occupy your mind. You must decide which one will reside there. <laughs> Worry and faith. A seesaw sometimes, up and down. Worry and faith. Worry and faith, I think, is a theme of each of our readings we just heard this morning. In the book of Acts, a good and kind woman has died in the community of Joppa. She was dead, but the disciples sent for Peter to come. They were beyond worry, and yet their faith had led them to ask Peter to come. Peter arrives. He prays for the woman, who then, in response to him, opens her eyes, sits up, and is alive. That is some faith. In Psalm 23, worry, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you, God, are with me. Faith. In the passage we heard from Revelation, those who have come out of the great ordeal, they will hunger and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them. They have suffered, they have worried, they have been through hell. But the shepherd will guide them to springs of the water of life. And, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Faith. And finally, in the Gospel of John, Jesus is walking in the temple during the festival celebrating the miracle of the lamp oil lasting for eight days. The miracle which freed the Jewish temple from pagan occupation and restored the people. The people want Jesus to tell them plainly that he is the Messiah. In the midst of holiness they cannot see. Their faith burns low. They are anxious, they want to know. Even in the midst of the sight of a miracle, they doubt, they worry. The Good Shepherd leads us, the psalmist sings, which is the perfect segue into a few sheep stories. <clears throat> One Christmas, two businessmen built a skating rink in the middle of a pasture. A shepherd is leading his flock and trying to take a shortcut across the rink, but the sheep were afraid of the ice and wouldn't cross it. As the shepherd desperately tried to tug the sheep to the other side, 
One of the businessmen turned to the other and said, look, that guy is trying to pull the wool over our ice. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so sorry. There's more, there's more. A man needing a heart transplant was informed by his doctor that the only heart available was that of a sheep. The man wasn't at all sure about this at first, but eventually he agreed, and the doctor successfully transplanted the sheep's heart into the patient. The next day, the doctor, doctor was doing his hospital rounds and asked the man how he was feeling. The man replied, not bad. <laughs> you like it, Brenda? <laughs> Something to call you about. <laughs> Feel free to use these anytime. <laughs> so the readings this week also raised questions for me about where God, our shepherd, is leading us. Where is God leading each of us as individuals and leading us as a congregation? leading us as followers of Jesus in a world of worry and war, a world of hurt and confusion. How do we know where we are being led? Even on a daily basis, I get up, make plans, and then bam, life is constantly changing. It's like life on triage. How to welcome faith in the midst of worry, and how to welcome trust and balance without fears. I want to ask you to take a minute right now and ask yourself what it is that is causing you to worry today, these days, right this moment. What is causing you to worry? What if anything is making you feel anxious or stressed? And stay with those thoughts for a bit. Imagine now that our shepherd Jesus is right by your side and silently tell Jesus what is worrying you right now. Now I suggest if you listen or watch or wait in your heart and mind, there will be a response. There may be nothing right now, but wait, maybe the lines are busy. Maybe the faith to let go of your worry is not quite ready. Please try another time, if you can, at any time that you want. Life will come at us every day, lifting us up and knocking us down. But we decide whether worry or faith will reside. Amen. 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 <laughs>
expanding as you are able to affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that you have seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten by my name, one being to the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious cloud. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. For the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, and he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are on page 388. Book of Common Prayer, form 4. <laughs> Let's pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your, in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all of the nations in the ways of justice and peace that they may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, <clears throat> that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, com we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hasten, O God, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. 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 And now as we greet one another, 
May the peace of God be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace of the Lord, John Mayer. <laughs> <laughs> you too, man. Peace, John Mayer. God's peace. Peace. All right. All right. Please be seated. Oh, how's everybody this morning? Good? Good. Good. <laughs> It was nice to laugh in church. Pardon? It was nice to get to laugh in church. <laughs> to laugh in church. To laugh in church. It's nice to be back in church, yes. And I, I find that's very important. Someone said laughter, I hope laughter is the best medicine because that's the only one I can afford. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I don't I don't get to talk to people a lot, so they send me to church. <laughs> anyway, welcome again this morning. I'm very glad you all are here. It's wonderful. Now let's present the offerings of our life and our labor unto God.
of worship continues on page 367. Page 367. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We 
we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Luke and Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
turn to page 365. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us out into our world in peace and grant us the strength and courage to love and serve you with the gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.
There are some folks who might be interested in being an acolyte. I would catch uh, John Mayo. We're also going to be looking for readers. Laura, Robert, um, if you would uh, talk to John about that, Larry would be as well. Uh, and, and, and folks, uh, it's a way to serve. Be it an acolyte or a reader is a way to serve. We'll also be doing classes for Eucharistic minister. Um, it's looking like the world is opening back up. So I'll keep you posted on that. God bless you all. John, John said 1 o'clock Friday. Church for that, man. Too long. Listen up for just a minute. 1 o'clock Friday. 1 o'clock Friday here if you can do it. If not, we'll figure out something else for you if you're interested. Thank you.